Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out a really cool asset called Curved Worlds. This is an awesome looking effect that can really make your game stand out. This video is split into two parts. First, let's look at some of the demos to see what the asset can do and how they work. Then after that, I'll do a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to start using it and add it to your own games. Check out the entire asset review playlist where I highlight great assets to help you make your games awesome. And as always, there's a link to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. This one is also part of the Amazing Shaders bundle. It adds an extra 30% off if you're also interested in the other assets. So, Curved Worlds. Like the name implies, this helps you create curved worlds, and by curved, it means that it can curve in pretty much any way that you can imagine. So you can do something subtle, like for example, the Animal Crossing effect, where you have just a slight blend, or you can do the inverse of that, and do a sort of inception-like bending of the world, or you can push it to the limit and end up with a completely circular world, or you can make some really weird twisty corridors. It's an extremely flexible and adaptable effect. So here I've got my project and I imported the package. Now the package that you import from the asset store just contains the installers for the various pipelines. It supports the built-in, HDRP, and universal. So in my case, I then opened up the universal pipeline package. After you install it, if you see some shader errors, make sure you're using the correct version shown in the manual. So at the time of this recording, the minimums are Unity 2019.4 and Universal 7.4.1. So that's what I'm using over here in my project. Now, as with many assets, this one comes with some really good documentation. So you've got a PDF manual with just about everything you can imagine. It's got tons of tutorials so you can understand how it works and how to get it looking exactly as you want it. Now we're going to see the manual in more detail in a little bit. And another thing it includes is also tons of example scenes. So if we expand this, there you go, tons of examples. Some of them are complete examples and some of them are starting tutorials. So let's first see the complete demos and then afterwards we're going to try to follow some of the tutorials. Now the first demo over here, the Ben Classic Runner. This is the most basic example. It's essentially just a runner game. So you've got a car constantly moving forward and some more cars coming in. So a very basic demo. And then up here you see two separate sliders. And by moving them, you suddenly start seeing the effect in action. So if you take them to the limits, then you can all of a sudden see just how much this effect changes. And you can also pause the game and look at the scene view to see how the effect actually works. So here in the scene view, you see there goes the road and goes down into the right. Here you can also see a key point for how the effect actually works, which is if I select one of these objects, so let's say select this one, and there you go, the transform is positioned all the way up here. So essentially all of this business that you see is simply the visual. In terms of object positions, the objects are all up here. So if I select them all, you can see all of the colliders, everything is up here. It's only the visuals that go down there. So in technical terms, this is a vertex transformation shader. It takes the visuals and positions them differently depending on the distance to the camera. So all of the logic for this minigame is super simple. You've got some chunks with some cars that spawn at the end and they simply move backwards. And then all of the weird shapes that you see are just based on the visuals. So this is awesome because it means that your logic can stay relatively simple. So all the logic for this minigame is all just very basic. So you don't need to worry about positioning your transforms in any weird positions. You build your game like normal and then apply the effect on top. So for example, you can use normal nav mesh pathfinding since the colliders are all the way up here placed exactly as normal, separate from the visuals. And if I move the visuals, you can see, yep, everything changes. And it's the same thing for all the physics, animation, and so on. None of this is affected by the actual visual. You can grab one of these objects and move them around to see how the visual changes depending on the position to the camera. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So here's another demo, and this one is curving on the Z, which again, we can play around with just how much we want to curve. So something really subtle or something really extreme. And again, this demo showcases how the logic does not change. So if I fire some bullets, it looks like they have a huge curvature. But again, over here, we can see that's just the visual. So here is a shell. And if I resume the game, there you go, it goes forward. So it does not curve all the way down there. Then this is an example on a 2D game. So it's a standard platformer and add some curvature. And now it looks like it's being played on a cylinder. And then this demo, which I think is the coolest effect. So like this, just a normal top-down game. Now let's add some curvature. And there you go, now we are inside a mini planet. So this is essentially just applying the curvature on every single axis, so you end up with a cute little tiny planet. It's really fun to look at, and if we pause, and yet there we see the extreme distortion placed on the visuals, but on the camera view, yep, it all looks great. Then here's a very strange demo. So without the effect, it's just a boring old road, nothing special. Now let's add a spiral, and there you go, the road starts rotating and making a spiral, and same thing on this side, also rotate, spiral, and so on. 
So it spirals one way and spirals another way. And this effect is also completely dynamic. So in this case, it is moved by pivot point transforms over here on the scene view. So if I move them around, you can see, yep, how the effect changes. So it's really interesting. Then here's another interesting one, just two basic roads, then apply some spiral distortion, and there you go, look at that, very strange. Then you've got this really weird twisty corner. You can curve massively one way or another way, apply some horizontal twisting or some vertical twisting. Then this one showcases some very weird highway hills. And finally, this one with some very strange road spirals. So you can see how these demos showcase lots of interesting effects that you can create. But there's also two more demos here that showcase another thing you can do with this asset. As you saw in all those demos, those are just visuals, the objects never actually move. But you can also apply a script to those objects if you do want them to move the transform based on the visual position. So in this one, like it says here, the red meshes are standard, so they are just moving the visual. So the objects themselves are placed all the way up here. However, on the blue ones, they are actually being positioned where the visual is. And again, this is all dynamic, so I can move this around and see the difference. So here on the scene view, we can actually see the difference. If I select all the red ones, yep, they're all up here. However, all the blue ones, there you go, they go alongside the curvature. And again, all dynamic, so if I move them, they are correctly moving. And you can select one of them to see, yep, there you go, it's the script. So the position and rotation is all being handled just by placing this. So this is very useful if, for example, you want to use the mouse to click on one of these objects. If you just move the visual and you were to click, for example, on this red thing, it would actually not select it because the collider is not positioned here, but rather all the way up here. So to solve that, you just have that so that when I click here, the collider is actually indeed in here. Another thing that it does is it also fixes distortion. So you can see these objects are relatively tall. And you can see the red one over here, as you can see up there, it's quite a bit stretched. It looks good on the bottom, but on the top, it is clearly stretched. Whereas on the blue one, since the whole object is moved instead of just the visual, as you can see, there's no distortion. And then the final demo takes it one step further. So the red meshes, they're all normal. They're being moved just by the visual. Then the blue ones have the script, so they get positioned. And finally, the green ones, the visual is moved using the shader, but the child game object containing the collider is moving according to the script. Then you've got a bunch of lights, which are also a bit of a mix. So some of the child game objects are moving according to the script, others are just the visual. Looking over here, we can see everything in action. If I select all the objects, yep, there you go, look at that. All of the lights are placed up here, but then also some objects are placed all the way down here. There you go, look at that collider, it's down there. So you can see how you have tons of control over whether you just want the visual to move or the entire object or just parts of an object. So now that we've seen the demos, let's see how we can use it to add it to a game. The asset comes with some really useful tutorials. So let's load up tutorial one. And right now this is just a normal game. So there's no bending anywhere. It's just a basic endless runner. So the car is here, I can move left and right. There are cars being spawned, roads and so on. So, so far it's just a basic game. Nothing in here is related to the Curved Worlds asset. Then all of the instructions are up here on the manual. So let's follow them and see what we need to do. Now, as I mentioned, this is a shader effect, which means that our objects need to be using that shader. And right now everything is set up using the standard URP shader, so that's why you didn't see any bending. Now in this demo here in the hierarchy, we can see a car spawner and a chunk spawner. This is what constantly spawns those objects. So for example, we go into the car and over here we've got the various cars that get spawned. And for example, over here we see a car, it's using this material, which down here we can see that it's using the basic URP lit. Now what we need to do is essentially change it. So go in here, go inside amazing assets, then inside curved world and finally choose lit. All right, so that's it. Now we can do this one by one, which would be quite a lot of work, or we can use the super useful tool. So just go up here into window, then amazing assets and open up the curved world window. And then up here we can go into the renderers overview and now this shows a list of all of the renderers present in this scene and all the materials that they are using. So right now you can see that I changed one, this one to use the curved world lit, but we still got eight of them using the standard URP lit. Now I can just go up here, click on change, go into amazing assets, curved world and swap into lit. And there you go. Now all of them are correctly using that shader. So now we can select any of these just to verify, select it and yep, there you go. It is using that shader. Now another thing about the shader is up here you see this. So you've got a bend type and a bend ID. Now the bend type is the type of algorithm that won't be applied. So in this case, we want to bend the road and all of the objects along the X axis. And then the ID is just in case we want to have multiple variations. So with this example, let's leave it like this. So classic runner X positive and with the bend ID of one. Now, just by applying that, we don't see any difference. So right now everything still looks exactly the same. In order to change the parameters for the shader, we need to use a script. So this tutorial already comes over here with a game object named Curved Long Controller. 
So let's go into this one, then we go into add component and then go into amazing assets, curved world and add a controller. Now over here, we can choose the bend type. So again, classic runner X positive, the bend ID, the same thing, just one. And then over here, we've got the settings that we can use. So here's the game looking normal. Now if I modify the size on the horizontal, there you go, it starts rotating to the right and rotating to the left. Same thing for vertical, up or down. Then you can also play around the offset to make the effect only show up a bit in there. So there you go, look at that, very interesting. So you can see how this is super easy to add. We just use the included tool to change all of the materials in the scene. Then we add this script and that's it. Now here we can play around these values to get the exact look that we're looking for. Now, if you want to use a different effect, you just have to select a different bin type in the material. So again, you can do it manually or go again into our very nice tool here on the renderers. Just go onto this button, click here, then change curved world bend settings. Then let's say instead of classic runner X positive, let's go with a twisted spiral. Then hit on change and this will change all of the materials. And now up here in our curved world controller, let's go select the same thing. And there you go. Now we've got these parameters and we move them and there you go. Look at that. Now we've got a completely different effect. So as you can see, this is super simple to add. And if you want to take it even further, you can. The manual is extremely detailed and it's full of information for how you can build upon this. If you want to extend upon this with some custom shaders, you can do that. So you can make them handwritten if you know how to write code. Or another thing it includes are also shader graphs. It works with both the Unity shader graph as well as the Amplify shader. You just go into the window and over here on manage, you've got these two buttons. So create a sub shader with vertex or vertex plus normal. And as soon as you click on it, if there you go, now here I've got that. And you can open it and there you go. Here is a sub shader with an input and output. So here I've got an empty custom shader and I can just drag this one and this works as a sub graph. So you've got an input and an output and you can add anything else you wanted. So you can combine this effect with any custom shader that you already have. Again, the manual is really good, so check it out to see all of the ways that you can expand upon this. All right, so that's Curved Worlds. Nowadays, if you want to find success with your games, it really needs to visually stand out. Using one of the many effects in this asset is one way that you can achieve that. Try playing around with everything it can do to make your game have a really very unique look. As always, there's a link to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. This one is also part of the Amazing Shaders bundle, it adds an extra 30% off if you're also interested in the other assets. Check out the full asset review playlist for some more awesome assets. I hope you find this asset useful in your own projects. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.